What's going on ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Electrics production. I'm Jay, and I can't wait to let you in on the latest hidden gem that I discovered on Steam this week. What would you get if the dev team behind Neon Chrome had a movie night and decided to watch Judge Dredd? You'd get Judge, a top-down shooter with a decidedly more tactical feel to it, and more upgrades than people who have broken controllers playing Cuphead this week. But the real question here is if the game is any good or just a shameless ripoff of a famous comic book character mixed with a retread of this dev team's earlier work. So let's grab our gavel and robe and pass judgment on this game. <laughs> So I want to get this out of the way right now. I don't care for the art style of this game. I know that's totally subjective, but it just feels too generic and rehashed at this point, without any real flair or personality of its own. Plus, it's just boxy and unattractive to boot. Maybe that's just because I recently played through Ruiner, which had enough style and personality for 10 games. But this game just has a sterility to it that's less than inspiring. Now that gripe aside, I really love this game. There have been a wealth of top-down shooters as of late, and you won't find me complaining. After a very short intro with a black screen and text, we get the name of the game pasted across the screen, looking like the cover of an 80s metal band. Now controls feel tight and responsive, and I don't have any issue with them. In the intro level, we have to dispatch a few thugs, which is easy, without letting some of the hostages die, which is less easy. You will accidentally kill the hostages about as often as the baddies in the game decide to dispatch them themselves. One thing that I love is the repurposing of the wall destruction from Neon Chrome into this game, as it provides endless play possibilities and tactical options for dispatching enemies. Besides, the mechanics feel more at home in this gritty cybercop tale than in the aforementioned title. And on that note, I'll just say that all the things that were lifted from Neon Chrome actually feel better and more enjoyable in this game, at least in this reviewer's opinion. After beating the first area, you're whisked away to your single-screen hideout, where all manner of upgrades can be purchased and applied. Most are locked behind a progression system, and this drip feed of new content really helps to push the game forward, and always left me wanting to complete just one more level. You can upgrade your character in the cybernetics lab. I personally love the shock upgrade that auto-zaps criminals if they get too close. Just be aware that it will zap hostages as well as baddies if they're standing too close together. You can also upgrade your Swiss Army gun, aka the gavel. There's a litany of different upgrades, including different primary fire modes and limited use special weapon modes. All of these can be further upgraded at a higher and higher cost once initially unlocked. There are also gavel mods that can be applied later in the game, after level 8 is reached, that can change the overall form and function even further. This screen also has system settings, which are very well done with lots of options, and a map screen allowing you to choose new levels or replay old ones. And this leads into one of the features that I really enjoyed, and that's the medals in the game that can be earned in each level. Specifically, there are three per level on normal mode and three more on hard mode and they all vary depending on the stage. The hard mode is another welcome addition here as it gives even more money to earn and provides even more playtime for those looking to get the most out of their game. I really loved getting to build the perfect weapon for that stage and then really put it to the test with this increased difficulty that's available. Now the medals range from completing a level in a specified amount of time, challenging you to rethink level completion in an expedited and at times creative manner. The challenge may be for you to receive no damage for the level, or to collect all items available in that stage requiring a bit more snooping around. This made the game more fun for me and increased play diversity as it kept me from just getting into a single play style. The levels are well designed if not a little simple and drab at times, and are set up to encourage fun encounters between myself and the diverse enemy types on display in the game. Just know that they can feel a bit cluttered as well sometimes. Even though the art style did little for me, the particle effects, which have been toned down some from Neon Chrome, are excellent and make for some eye-catching firefights. This is especially true later in the game when you have a shotgun, a pet laser-firing robot, and find yourself in a gun battle with over a dozen well-armed enemies while utilizing your rocket-launching special attack. Needless to say, it can get pretty crazy. You'll be rescuing hostages, dispatching named enemies, stopping heist, robberies, and so on. One thing that I liked was the ability to find keys in a level which applied a permanent unlock to certain doors, thus allowing much quicker future playthroughs when trying to earn a medal or perfect a stage. Sadly, the voice acting is abysmal, with the voices in the game being generated from what sounds like Windows Text Reader at times. This is not just distracting, but painful to listen to and kills the mood quicker than Judge Dredd dispatches justice. The music in the game is an overall mixed bag with none of it being necessarily bad, but only a few tunes really rising above mediocrity. The sound, on the other hand, is fun, with some deep booming retorts from the heavier weapons and some fast and frantic automatic style weapons. 
I love dispatching enemies from behind with the game's stealth melee mechanic, and at one point I shot a rocket that fell short, but thanks to the splash damage in the game still managed to blow two thugs right out the window and to their ultimate death below. Most levels start with some semblance of tactical intent and stealth, but usually wrap up with a level in pieces, bodies strewn everywhere, and smoke rising as you stroll to your flying cop car filled with hostages ready to be flown to safety. The game does one heck of a job making you feel like Judge Dredd, which of course was the obvious intent here. I do wish a jump or vault mechanic was included in the game as it leaves you having to shoot or melee your way through some parts of the level, and this can slow you down. There's lots of little details in the game that I like. For instance, shooting the ATMs and the cash registers produce small amounts of in-game currency. Finally, while the game may start on the easy side, it ramps up nicely as it goes along. I have to say that as I made it onto the second group of stages, there are five groupings with five levels per group, I found I was having to spec myself out more and more purposely with some increased trial and error in order to beat stages with all medals collected. This isn't a complaint, but a welcome difficulty with equal reward. And as most stages are on the short side, the game never overstays its welcome and can easily be played on any gamer's schedule. So does the game stand on its own merit, or is it just a shadow of its predecessor? I know that this might not be a popular opinion, but I wasn't a huge fan of Neon Chrome. I know, I know, the game was very well received and enjoyed by many, but it just didn't quite do it for me. I wanted to like it, I really did, but I found myself less and less drawn back to its neon-drenched dystopian vision of the future. I could never quite put my finger on it. This game feels like a natural and much appreciated progression by the 10 Tons dev team, and I really feel like it was the game that they always wanted to make the entire time. It's not a terribly complex game by most gaming standards, but it does something well that can really make or break a game, and that's being fun. The game challenges you, makes you feel powerful and helpless at the same time, draws you in and doesn't waste your time on trivial nonsense. It drops you in the shoes of a dread persona and lets you go to work on the scum of this every city of the future. At the end of the day, I play games because I enjoy them, and I enjoy this game. As far as longevity, this one will vary depending on your love for top-down arcade slash tactical shooters, and desire to unlock new upgrades as there's no compelling narrative to drive progress to completion. So that's my review, and my judgment here is a solid B+. The game could have been an A with better voice work, more charming slash stylistic art direction, and a tad less clutter in the levels. Overall though, great work and a fun game. And if you would like to see me play more of this, or any other game for that matter, just let me know in the comment section below. And subscribe if you would enjoy seeing my next review here on Electric Productions. Game on, everyone. <laughs>